of equal rights, opportunities and privileges for women in focus as Nigeria joined the global community that commemorates the 2020 International Women's Day. The federal government assures Nigerians of environmental safety of the Ajakuta, Abuja, Kaduna and Kano gas pipeline project. Plus, update on COVID-19 as Nigeria maintains its one case status. These and more on today's Panorama. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ian Ray John. And report just reaching out says that the Minister of Health, Dr. Osagi Haniri, has confirmed a new case of coronavirus in the country, bringing the total number to two. The newly confirmed case is an Ugun State contact of the index case. The minister, however, said he has no significant clinical symptoms. This brings to two the total number of confirmed COVID-19 in Nigeria. The minister emphasized that the new case is not a new importation, but a contact of the index case who has since been in isolation and under clinical follow-up. The index case has no clinical symptom and is in care at the Infectious Disease Hospital in Lagos. Moving on, President Muhammadu Buhari is tasking the Lagos state government to sustain efforts at containing the coronavirus disease, describing steps taken so far as encouraging, reassuring and worthy of emulation. The president said this while granting audience to Governor Babajide Somonlu at his official residence. The discussions held behind closed doors centered mainly on the global pandemic and the status of containment efforts in Lagos and other parts of the country. President Buhari appreciated at the high level preparedness and commitment of the Lagos State Government in preventing the spread of the COVID-19 index case and promised desired support and assistance by the federal government. Well, he, he commended us and we just continue to, you know, um, do what we're doing, right? And um, and he's, he's appreciative of the fact that I'm, I had come personally to to, to thank him and to, to, to brief him as to what we're doing. We still have the um, the index patient. Um, uh, I hear that he's responding um, right. And for you to be completely out of it, there are a series of tests that needs to happen, right? And I think the, the entire medical personnel that are doing that are, are currently, I mean, um, monitoring monitoring him and we're also monitoring um are the other um people um the other set of patients that will have on the um observation you know all that is going on i mean the, the contact center calls them you know on the daily basis you know and then if there's need be um they will also be asked to conduct tests you know but but um, um up until last night um all of the Cases in terms of um, tests that we've, con we've conducted um, have been negative. They're still running some tests as we speak, right? On some other on, the, on some other cases. So we'll see how it goes. But the bottom line is that um, we certainly should not allow anything to drop off. You know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, monitoring. You know, that's that's really what 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 we should ensure. And sometimes some of these things don't give you notice. You know. Each time when they come, you just need to be ready and be prepared for it. Um, it it's important that Lagos just continue to raise that bar. And with the latest updates of uh, two cases in Nigeria, President Muhammadu Buhari has sent messages to President Hassan Rouhani and Moon Jae-in of Iran and uh, South Korea, respectively, and the Prime Minister of Italy, Giuseppe Conte, expressing deep sympathies following increase in incidents of the deadly coronavirus in their countries. A statement by the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Media and Publicity, Garba Shehu, says President Buhari commends the three countries on their efforts to contain the virus and expresses confidence that with the support of the world health organization and other global agencies collaborating to contain the virus, it will only be a matter of time before the world sees an end to this disease. He encourages Nigerians to continue to show support to citizens of all the countries who are resident in the country, stating that there is no cause for alarm. And Italy, South Korea and Iran remain Nigeria's allies in good and bad times. The statement confirms the approved payment of the sum of 620 million naira last Friday, a second tranche to assist the health 
ministering curtailing the disease, bringing the total payments made so far to 984 million naira. And still talking health, but now on sickle cell, ascertaining genotype for aspiring couples has become a prerequisite for a happy married life. This is to avoid the consequences that could mar the joy of the home where couples fail to ascertain their genotype before contracting marriage. This was a thrust of discussion at the workshop by Vision 2020 on sickle cell disorder. Basa Ita Epang reports. Cell disease is a genetic blood disorder which occur when a child inherits a trait from each parent that causes most of their red blood cells to form into crescent rather than disc. It is said that he who wears the shoes knows where it pinches. So, the discussions on the recurrent pains and complications caused by sickle cell disorder by sufferers is heart touching and everything must be done to ensure aspiring couples acquaint themselves with required knowledge on their genotype before contracting marriage. I'm not just knowing your genotype. Be strong enough to make the right decisions. You cannot say love, 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 and then you bring a child that will still come and start falling sick and having issues. Yes, we are saying, okay, you can try it with sickle cell disorder, but the complications are not easy, and it's not everybody that can really overcome it. Yes, just like how I want, sickle cell anemia could be avoided. Dr. Okoma speaks on management of the disease. But there's no policy on ground to manage sickle cell. Transplant is being done, but it's not being done by the government hospitals. We need to have transplant centers. So government can maybe to help establish this, but from, uh, policies in place to actually accommodate this large number of sickle cell. Two to three percent of Nigerians are, are living with sickle cell. Speaker stressed the need to encourage people with sickle cell anemia rather than stigmatization. Pasi Taikman. NTA News. This is Panorama live on the network service of the NTA. Time to take a break. Please stay. The struggle for independence had been a long and tough one. Our founding fathers and compatriots sacrificed their comfort and even shed their blood. We cannot at this point in history afford to spirit away their sacrifices for immediate but temporary gains of today. Let us emphasize what unites and not what divides us. Working for the unity of purpose with a stronger vision for a better tomorrow. NTA, growing with the nation. Together, no matter where you come from, no matter your religion, we are one. Let's live together. Let's stop fighting each other. Let us live as one. It doesn't matter. Your religion, we are one, let's live together. How can we develop when we're always in crisis? Families have become refugees in their country. No matter our differences, show some understanding. No matter where you come from, no matter your religion, we are one, let's live together. Nigeria, the only country we can train with remarkable potentials to excel. Let us believe in ourselves and change our attitude for the sake of our country and generations unborn. Let us revive our cultural values which are our essence as a nation. Let us renew the spirit of patriotism and hope in our dear country. Do not take or give bribe. Be punctual always. No more African time. We can't expect to be global citizens and operate on African time. Join the queue. Insist that people are attended to on a first-come basis no matter who they are or where they come from. Nigeria, good people, great nation. Good to have you back.
Sanya Bata Road is now a one-way drive. This is part of the activation of the Abuja Master Plan. Joseph Johnson, who cut up with the FCT minister as he flagged off the enforcement as an update on the compliance. Following the Federal Capital Development Authority's announcement that uh, Sunny Abacha Way, that is the road that separates uh, the CBN head office and of course the National Christian Center will become a one-way drive uh, beginning today, Monday 9th March 2020. Uh, we've come to see how motorists are complying with that directive. As you can see, it's been enforced. No more driving towards the National Mosque from NTA headquarters, uh, CBN and the Ecumenical Center. But let's get to find out how uh, this is going down with road users. <laughs> it's frustrating. I have to go and marry Goran before I get here. It's not for Nisha. Maybe with time we'll get used to it. I think uh, if, uh, if the motorists uh, if were able to if we can follow the, the, the right route, uh, within uh, within six five minutes, you can you can actually drive around. So it's much much safer. The road is much wider. I know good on a uh, one way Oga. You know like I'm. Um, you know it's a very good uh, moves. At least it will minimize the accidents and uh, there will be uh, the road safetyness will be very effective. This is one particular project that we have spent enormous amount of time and resources because without completing this project, the northern and southern sectors of Abuja would not be uh, connected. And now we've allowed traffic movement for the last few months, you know, just, you know, to allow construction to continue. But we have reached a certain milestone where we have to now start enforcing the one-way traffic system. Uh, and, and, and the whole idea is that's how it's meant to be. And this is supposed to be what we call the central cultural spine of Abuja. And it is quite understandable and expected that uh, there will be gridlock and uh, confusion on this road. Uh, pending when motorists would have been fully aware of the new traffic rule. For now though, alternative routes have been advised. Joseph Johnson, NTA News. All right, today happens uh, to be the enforcement for the deadline of uh, the one-way drive on a battery road. And I have with me right here in the studio, uh, the Director of Engineering Services, FCDA, Shehu Hadi Ahmed. Many thanks for joining us, sir. Thank you very much. Now, so can you uh, give us your insight on this uh, development and uh, what should motorists uh, respect uh, at this point in time? Thank you very much. Uh, actually, what the FCT administration tries to do today is to formally um, inaugurate or officially inaugurate the one-way traffic flow system which has been the concept under the Abuja master plan for the parkway system. Uh, the parkway is a road, um, a special category of road which connects actually the uh, northern and the southern development corridors of the Abuja city when completed. Um, within the central area it has been provided in such a way that yeah, it's supposed to observe a one-way flow. That is why you see the split uh, as it is so named within the central area, Sani Abacha Way, from the Shehu Musair Adua Center uh, through to this loop around the FCTA NTA where we are here. Um, by the arrangement today, we are trying to f formally uh, sensitize and um, direct the motorists to now start observing the one-way flow as against what was of, uh, formerly being operated on temporary basis before. Uh, that is to say now, with today's uh, formalization of the situation by the Honorable Minister, you can only come down from the Sheraton uh, axis of the road, down through the national uh, mocks, through the, to CBN, pass by the NTA here, go outward, uh, take the loop around the FCTA, and go back through Jai East Bank uh, canalizing office, go down to the national mocks again, and take the loop around the, the uh, Sheikh Musair Adwa Center. Where you have any need to exit or to come into the road, there are facilities provided along the one-way floor stream so that there will now be a little bit more sanity in the otherwise what we have chaotic arrangement as we are doing the construction and then we have problems. Okay, now, would you say that there was enough awareness uh, before the enforcement today? 
Yeah, we actually started this um, sensitization uh, almost a week now, and we intend to sustain it for another two weeks to continue. And this uh, enforcement will be a gradual process, and we have given from today ninth for a period of one month. This thing will continue, uh, and we have pinned down some of our road traffic services officials who are being complemented by the Federal Road Safety Corps. Uh, FCT command to ensure that there are um, directions and guidance to motorists. It may take some time for some of the especially visiting uh, motorists to the city to uh, appreciate but the characterization of the flow pattern along these roads are such that you will just need a matter of few times, a few days. And then you get see, it to yes, adjust we'll to it. To. Yes. Uh, you, you made mention of sensitization, yeah. but I think that what is in place as at this morning is enforcement because I was caught up uh, this morning on my way to the office. It's actually an enforcement today, yes. which, which means that you will be sent back if you're on the wrong uh, path. Yes, so to say, because we don't want you to go through because you don't know what you're going to meet ahead. So we are trying to ensure this is, uh, for enforcement today is not actually to start with the finding. If okay. you notice, it's just okay. to educate. Okay, so fine. Okay, so what are the challenges uh, you think uh, motorists will likely face and uh, your advice uh, to them? Um, I think uh, in the usual way, our, our motorists are normally very impatient. They always want to uh, cut their travel time. Instead of following the normal uh, route or assigned uh, route, they want to cut corners. We want to uh, uh, see to it that our motorists should please, for the safety of our other vulnerable road users, they should try to respect and observe what has been laid down and uh, the guidance that uh, various FCT officials, trans, uh, traffic officials will be giving them within the period. It will come to pass. People will get to... Uh, get today, used to it and I of course adjust. Okay. Yeah. Yes. All right, thank you so much, uh, Director of Engineering Services, FCDH, uh, Shehu Hadi Ahmed. In other news, President Muhammad Buhari joins Nigerian Body of Benches and Nigerian Bar Association in celebrating former Justice of the Supreme Court and High Commissioner to the United Kingdom, Justice George Adi. Shola Uguntadi on his 80th birthday, March 10, 2020. In a statement signed by the Special Advisor to the President, Media and Publicity, Femi Adeshino says President Buhari, in a tribute to Justice Uguntadi, the President said the High Commissioner earned his respect while serving at the Supreme Court before his retirement in 2010. By the way, he conducted himself with virtue and honesty and conviction to do the right thing. The President wishes Justice Uguntadi good health, long life, and service to the country and praise that the Oguntadi clan continues to increase. And on Women's Day, the role of women in nation building cannot be an underestimated and so the federal government will do all within its power to ensure that the Nigerian women attain greatness and as well achieve their goals of being worthy role models in the society. This was the message of the Head of Service to the Women at the commemoration of the 2020 International Women's Day by the Head of Service Christian Fellowship in Abuja. Doi Dia reports. The euphoria of the 2020 International Women's Day is very much in the hair and just in the mood of that celebration. The of service Christian Fellowship is also celebrating this day with various messages written on the plaque, such as display, one of which is we choose to be equal for humanity, another said gender equality, economic prosperity, and that is the message for this year's celebration. I have one of the women here who will shed light on the event of today. The theme is each for equal. And when we are talking of equality, we are saying we should give everybody opportunity. That is gender right. Thank you Thank very you. much. Uh, one important message that I'm taking away from here is the fact that the women actually been the forefront of contributing meaningfully to the social economic development of Nigeria. And of course, you see that playing out during elections, seeing their ability to multitask, and that is why it becomes imperative for all Asandri to support this wonderful women even as they celebrate womanhood.
equal rights, equal opportunities and privileges are the demands of women the world over as they marked this year's International Women's uh, Day uh, yesterday. Nigerian women are not left out in adopting the theme. I am Generation Equality. Monsu Damien Dati takes us through the peculiar stories of women. Beatrice Godwin, a widow and mother of three, all the way from Madala, a suburb of Abuja, finds her way to the city center with her tray of any seasonal fruits. At 50, marches young men, pound for pound, on the streets for buyers. I lost my husband 2011. So, 10 years now, I'm still suffering with the children. I'm training my children. The children is going to school. So far, so far, so far, so far. So, I started scrubbing my children from my head. Meet Zainab Buba Galadima, a wife, mother, and businesswoman who has a passion to serve her people and add value to their lives. This desire drove her to venture into politics, a journey she said was not so pleasant. For somebody that really wants to make a difference, it's just not, you know, it's, it's not looking bright at all. Finance for women is not as easy as the men. There's no um, in between where they'll say, oh, okay, she's a woman. This man pays 100 and she pays 50. No, you probably have to pay extra. And here is Blessing Aze going against all odds to also make ends meet. I can stay at home and write down. I want to help my husband. Because of men, not all the time they will bring money. Is it eight year old Hadiza, real name with hell, who has been raped? They do me bad thing. They do you bad thing? Yes. Like what? When I'm sleeping, they do me bad thing. <laughs> or these ones that have to beg for arms to feed on a daily basis. Different experiences, different backgrounds, but all united by one common factor. They are women. Oh God, I have much workload on me as a woman. I mean, I was growing up, I wanted to be a doctor. But because my, my parents were not capable to send me to school, I have to go and learn hard work. To survive is very hard, but you can't do anything. Irrespective of country, color, race or religion, they are faced with same or similar challenges. What might be considered a global phenomenon. One of the many reasons paving way for the commemoration of the International Women's Day to celebrate their achievements and draw attention to their rights and issues of gender parity. Women in politics, the percentage is still low, but um, more can be achieved. We are saying that we are as much qualified as the men, so how come we are not part of governance? We are saying that we can do it even better if given an opportunity. This year's event is unique with series of activities, advocacies, rallies and empowerment programs all geared towards gender equality. The equality we are talking is inclusion into national decision making. Though much has been achieved, but the likes of Beatrice, Zainab and Hadiza are looking forward to brighter and better days when they have overcome their unpleasant experiences to share their success stories. Momsu Damien Dati, NT News. Now time to talk sports. Now Sarawa United footballer dies during their home match on Sunday against Katsina United as Amanzi Marcus reports. <laughs> 